Hi, John Dooley from Dooley Noted Golf Vlog. I am talking to you today about La Hinch Golf Club and why I like La Hinch so much. La Hinch was, oh, way back when it was identified by the Black Watch for the golf course to be built in West Clare. And what was interesting about it was there was two sites picked. Uh, there was La Hinch, where it is right now, and Dune Beg. And the difference was, was that the train uh, went as far as Ennis Diamond and it was a shorter walk from the train stop in Ennis Diamond to La Hinch versus from Kilrush to Dune Beg. Wonderful piece of information. Anyway, without, with all the history attached with La Hinch also, it was an old Tom golf course at one point. Uh, Alistair McKenzie got his hooks into it and in recent times Martin Hawtrey has done some redesign work for the club. What I like about the golf course is there are a number of things in particular. You really have to, for, to score well, you really have to be a good driver, a good iron player, good pitcher, good putter, good bunker player. You need a whole lot because that golf course, eh, off when you go off track, the rough is thick, the bunkers are deep, the greens are tough and chipping is really important when you have a, the odd shot that's off here and there. Also attached to the golf course, I'd have to recommend is, is how you manage your distances off the tee. Now, if you're a long player and hit the ball a long way, that's been over 250 yards plus, you, there are holes where you will have too much club off the tee. Uh, what I mean by that, the third hole, for example, it's a really good par four, but if you hit it 260 or 270, there's a runoff area uh, at the end of the fairway into some rough and some stuff where it becomes really difficult. Well, it, when I say it becomes a more challenging second shot than playing, uh, playing let's say, 220 off the tee, depending on where the, tee, the, the wind is, depending on how far the tees are that you're playing and so forth. So going through the course briefly, I mean, the first, I, I, really, like the, I, I really like the course. Uh, I mean, the first, you gotta hit a second shot to a raised green, uh, second, it can be a uh, par five that you can hit in two, depending on the wind. But at the same time, it's, it can give you some. The third, tough par four. Five, uh, four is a tough par, par five. Uh, well, I say tough par five, not really tough par five. It's, it can be a tough tee shot, but once you get the tee shot in play, it's pretty pretty simple after that. You can hit the ball over the, uh, the mound that you can uh, for a blind second shot, and it runs down onto the green. One putt, eagle, happy days, simple hole. And the the fifth is the one of the famous, one of the most famous, if not the most famous par three in Ireland or in Irish golf, the Dell. So you can't see the green. Well, you can, when I say you can't see the green, you can see a portion on the right hand side, but not that much. But there's a stone on top of the, the dune, and that stone has moved around to identify where the flag is. So you hit over the stone when you're, when you're playing. That's pretty much it. And you could be lucky, you never know, you might have some hole-in-ones or something. It's, that hole has been known to produce tons of hole-in-ones over the year. Followed by the sixth. Sixth is, possibly, is my favorite hole of the golf course. The, it requires a good tee shot. Again, you gotta manage your distances because if you hit too far, it's, whoa, into this mine, huge deep bunker. Possibly the deep, deepest bunker I've ever seen in my life. It is really, really, really deep. So, uh, bearing in mind that's there, uh, hit onto the fairway, and then as you walk, around, walk up onto the fairway, as you walk down along to the 200 meter mark, the 200 yard mark, the 180, the hole opens up and you see this tremendous view of the Atlantic Ocean. The Cliffs of Moher on your right, along with one of Martello's towers, and on your left then is some beautiful scenery, albeit I hope it's a sparkling, beautiful day because you have the sun beating down on the ocean. It is beautiful. And not alone that, the, the, the challenge with the second shot is, is that it's a two-tier, or they say two-tier green, um, deep bunkers on the right hand side, and your toast, it's all just junk on the left. Best shot, best hole, beautiful, love it. And uh, then with seven, eight, nine, par four, par three, par four, 10 is a really strong par four, followed by par three, par five. Then 13 is a short par four. It might be short. A lot of people tend to take a run off the green, but if you go into the right hand side, there's some deep, not some deep stuff, but there's a dune there. It goes down quite a bit, and it can be bloody challenging getting a wedge to knock the ball out onto the green or even back into play. So up the left hand side is good. If you can't hit the green, uh, can't drive the green. 
Follow that, then there's some, the two are really good, strong par fours. Really good tee shots, really good second shots required. 16 is a solid par three, good par three, followed by 17 in premium, hit the fairway. But the tricky, the tricky thing about 17 is the second shot because of the wind. If there's no wind, it's not an issue. But if the wind is blowing, it can play havoc with the golf ball because even though it's blowing your face, it can be really strong, really stiff. So if you're playing with the caddy, ensure that you say, hey, do I have enough of a club? It's, yeah. If not, hit tons. Hit one more, hit two more. It's no big deal because that wind hits the ball and it just drops. 18 then is just a thump of a tee shot, thump of a second shot and uh, chip and put for birdie. Thanks very much for coming. But as I say, uh, hitting off the tee is important. The uh, second shot is important. I mean, it's a really, really, to me, it's got it all. The course has got everything. Gives you something. It's got some really some ch good challenges. Le plenty of hitting. And also, the, the nice thing about La Hinch is what the town has as well. So you can do some surfing, if needs be. Or if the kids can go surfing. For some sightseeing stuff, then you've got the Cliffs of Moher. That's a little further up. In the uh, You have this uh, national uh, geo park called the Burren. Within the Burren, there's a number of places to go and see. There's incredible rock formations from the Ice Age. Also, there's a place there called... The burn perfumery it's uh, what's what's really interesting about the burn perfumery is that the 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 owners have been making scented candles perfumes soaps and so forth from the flowers within for that grow within the various types of rock formations within the burn and some of those flowers bloom when there's uh, sun when there's no sun and it's an incredible mix and and it's a fantastic Irish business. And it's a really nice place to visit. Nice coffee shop there too. Uh, you can also view the uh, the making of or so how they make the the various types of soaps and so forth as well, and scented stock candles and all the extras and bits. Along with that, then there's the place to eat and dine. So you got a, you got um, an extensive tasting menu in Gregan's Castle. There's also a one star Michelin uh, restaurant called the Wild Honey Inn. There's a guest house there also. It's, what I say, fantastic. There's no words to describe, fantastic. It's, uh, it's owned by a family, Aidan and his lovely wife and a couple of kids then, uh, Reese and, and what the, what the, it's a family operation. And within the family operation then, they produce some really, really good food, offer some really nice accommodation and it's a fabulous experience. Wonderful. So you can have the Wild Honey Inn, uh, which is in Liston Verna, which is uh, uh, approximately 15 minutes away from La Hinch. Or in the town of La Hinch, you've got the La Hinch Golf Hotel, and you've got list the uh, of, of Vaughan Lodge, and different B&Bs and stuff. And there's another, sorry, and also at the southern side of the town, then there's Moy House. Smaller, uh, five star, I th when I say smaller five star, I think there's only 10 rooms available. But they offer food and beautiful dinner, nice, easy going, quite secluded, small, and it's uh, a beautiful service. Also with that, then you got further south, you got Loop Head, and there's a whole load of activities that you can see and, and uh, visit in West Clare. Also, it's only 45 minutes from Shannon Airport. Anyway, thanks very much indeed. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to email me. You can find my email addresses anywhere. Thanks a million. Concierge Golf Ireland, your hole-in-one golf tour operator.